morning. As you come in, go ahead and let us know that you are watching. Let me know that you are watching. And where are you watching from? As promised, I'm switching things up because I'm traveling. So I'm doing today instead of tomorrow. So as you come in, say good morning. Let me know that you are on and where you're watching from. We're going to finish off this teaching and encouragement concerning the Holy Spirit. Type that in the comments, partnership with the spirit, partner with the spirit. As I was uh, meditating on this topic, good morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I thought it was time to switch up. So partnership with Holy Spirit, partner with Holy Spirit. We've been on this um, teaching series concerning the Holy Spirit. And we started out last week talking about being filled with the Spirit and being um, led by the Spirit. So today we're going to hopefully finish off just this encouragement and this teaching concerning Holy Spirit. And I pray that you have eyes, you have ears to, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and that um, this teaching encourages you even the more to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit and learn how to utilize his presence in your life because that is truly how we gain success in the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for this uh, teaching. We thank you, Father, for all of those that will watch live, all of those that will watch the replay. We thank you, Father, for those that will hear this message and be encouraged by this message and be edified and inspired by this message. I pray, Father, that this teaching that you have graced me to deliver falls on good ground and it brings forth fruit unto righteousness. We yield our mouth to you, our eyes to you, our ears to you our heart to you and our faculties to you, Father, that you may be glorified in everything we do and say in Jesus' name. Amen. So partnering with the Holy Spirit. I think sometimes we um, get so accustomed to our own way to the degree that we disregard really how we're supposed to live as Christ followers. In the book of Luke chapter 22 and 42, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's grappling with the plan of salvation. He's grappling with the culmination of his destiny and his assignment and why he was sent to the earth. Each of us was sent to the earth for a specific reason. And oftentimes many believers do not get to that um do not discover the reason in which God sent them here, the assignment that is on their lives, what they are to do in the earth for the glory of the Lord. Each of us, when we really get to the core of who we are in the kingdom, have a specific assignment. Type in the comments, I have an assignment. And so what we have to learn how to do is lean into, grow in our fellowship and our love for the person of the Holy Spirit, because he is the one that is empowering us, enabling us to accomplish everything we are to do on earth. He is the connector. He is the bridge. Bridge. He is the one that is... Um, 
making you into the vessel that God ordains for you to be in the earth. And when we don't learn his character, his nature, how he deals with us, how he leads us, how he teaches us, how he partners with us, how he guides us. The Holy Spirit is not like, he's not like demons, right? Demons come in and they possess a vessel without that vessel's uh, full yieldedness. They come in and they possess, they take over, they make that vessel come into subjection. But the Holy Spirit, though he possesses the believer, but it is at the believer's yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. It's at the believer's um, willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Holy Spirit is not like the demonic, right? The Holy Spirit wants to partner with the vessel. The Holy Spirit does not want to take over and force because God honors the free will that he gave us. The enemy does not honor the free will. So when we talk about partnership with the Holy Spirit, we must realize that we have to be willing to yield our will to the Father. The flesh has its own will. There is nothing good in the flesh except the flesh be yielded and filled with the spirit. And if the flesh is in Christ Jesus, the flesh then becomes crucified and deadened when we allow it to. And when we understand the principles and how the kingdom of God works. So Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane in Luke chapter 22, go ahead and share this to somebody that needs to understand this teaching, these, these, um, uh, different teachings that we've been giving about the Holy Spirit and how to be filled and how to be led and how to partner with the Holy Spirit. Luke 22, 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. This is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, grappling with his assignment, grappling with the gruesomeness of his task, grappling with the pain that he's about to endure, the persecution, the lies, the slander, the people um, um, jeering and cheering for his death, grappling with between the flesh and the spirit. But he makes this profound statement. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Remember, I already told you guys, Jesus offered himself up and died through the Holy Spirit. Jesus was able to yield his flesh and die to himself, die to his natural humanistic nature. We've all been given a nature of survival, self-preservation to be able to survive on earth. This was given to us. It was an innate ability that God placed in us so that we could survive so that we could learn how to live and live amongst animals, live amongst each other. So there is a self-preservation that is built in the mechanism of the human nature. But here it is, Jesus is having to deny that basic instinct of survival. Oftentimes in the flesh, we don't want to experience that pain. Why? Because it goes against our nature. If we touch something hot, we're going to remove ourselves from that hot sensation. We're going to pull back. Why? Because it goes against the human nature. It goes against the human natural inclination. So when we talk about our will, what we desire, what um, constitutes um, the, for the betterment of our being, he's saying Father, if thou be willing, if you'll allow this, Father, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine being done. So Jesus is expressing his will. It's not that Jesus didn't have a will. It's not that you won't have a will. But what we have to learn how to do is yield our will to the Father, we can ask God, is there another way that this thing can work out? Is there, is there some option for me? Um, is there a way that we could do this? I see what you're saying, God, but I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make this happen. I don't know how to yield. I don't know how to walk 
through this test, this trial, this experience that I'm going through. I don't know how to do that. But he says, nevertheless, for my pain, nevertheless, in spite of my pain, in spite of what I'm getting ready to go through, in spite of my fear, um, in spite of the, the agony that I'm feeling right now, in spite of this process already having begun, I'm already dying inside. I'm good as dead. He said, nevertheless, about all of that, I'll reject my will because I want yours above my own. We have to become so in love with God to the degree that we are sold out for his mission. Remember, we talked about being co-partners with God, being joint heirs with Christ Jesus, being uh, jointly moving in tandem in joint cooperation with the Holy Spirit to accomplish the will of the Father. So Jesus is saying, I'm going to deny what I want. I'm, I'm not going to put what I want on um, the forefront of my heart. I'm going to lay my will down for what you want. And this is the single most difficult thing for humanity to do is to lay down their will for the will of the father. And when we fail to lay down our will, we don't enter into the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is fulfilling your assignment. The perfect will of God is walking out everything that's written about you in the books of heaven concerning you. Jesus said, behold, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. So there was a book that was written about Jesus and he was stepping into, he was manifesting what was within that book. He was manifesting the fullness of what God had intended for him. So we want to begin to walk in the book that's written of us. How do I walk in the book? I tap into the place where I am doing the works that were already ordained um, from before the foundations of the world, the works that God preordained for you to do in the earth. That may be book writing. That may be teaching children. That may be you have to get into a place of intimacy with God to discover and uncover the gold that he is hidden in your earthen vessel. Oftentimes he'll reveal those things within dreams, visions, prophecy, things of that nature so that you can begin to step in the will of God. But the first thing that you have to do is honor the word of God. Type in the comments. I got to do the first things first. I got to honor the word of God. I got to honor the Ten Commandments. I got to love the Lord thy God with all my heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. I got to... um. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto me. So the first thing is I got to desire the kingdom. I got a desire to be in right standing with God in order to get the preordained works. I have to honor the, the holy scriptures, what is already written. When I honor what's already written, I become a candidate, hear me, that God can trust with the ordained assignment. God is not going to let you enter into the preordained works because you have stepped into a level where heaven is backing you up and everything you do succeeds. You become unstoppable. Type in the comments, I'm unstoppable. Begin to declare that, begin to decree that, that you will be one that the enemy cannot stop. So when God speaks to you, when God highlights the word in your study time, allow that light to enter you and allow that word to be hid in your heart that the enemy cannot steal the seed to bring forth the harvest. So when we become ones that can yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we put down our will and say, nevertheless, my will is secondary to yours. My will doesn't supersede yours. I might feel this will. I might feel that I want to escape this pain. I might feel that this is going against my natural inclination. We have to understand this. God is a God that looks for sacrifice. Listen, love is a sacrifice. 
Jesus, because he loved us, he sacrificed. God, because he loved us, he sacrificed his son. He emptied himself into a human body and he sacrificed himself. He went to extreme measures to redeem us back to himself. So 2 Timothy 3 and 16 through 17 says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to become one that is serving the Lord. And here it is. The Holy Ghost teaches you. He will teach you all things. The scriptures tell us that you have no need of teacher for the Holy Spirit in you will teach you all things. He will lead us and guide us into all truth. But we have the Holy Scriptures to gauge what we're receiving, to gauge our relationship with the Holy Spirit, to gauge other believers experiences with the Holy Spirit to see where we measure up. Come on, because he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if I am having a, a, an experience with God that I cannot find in scripture, I have to really understand what am I experiencing here? Because God is a God to be experienced. Type in the comments, I need to experience God. God is not a God that we just read about or that we just... um externally see in the lives of others. No, we ourselves are to be having experiences with God, encounters, some people call them. You need to be having encounters with God to the degree that he opens up your soul. He goes into the deep places in the deep core of your heart and starts to reveal who you are and where you're headed. Type in the comments, reveal me to me, God. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what is in the deep recesses of your heart. Why? Because he placed everything in you. He placed it all in you. He hid it all in you. But you can only tap into that through the Holy Spirit and through Christ Jesus, because everything is hid in the life of Jesus Christ. So when we start to walk in the character, in the pattern, when we start to walk in the nature in which Jesus Christ walked, we start to stumble upon who we are within the context of the kingdom of God. Listen, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's not earthly desires and earthly satisfaction, but the the scriptures tell us, but it is righteousness, right standing with God, peace, peace on all sides, inner peace, peace with God and our fellow man and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So if we're going to be in the kingdom of God, we have to learn how to have divine fellowship. A lot of people think the kingdom of God appeals to the flesh. A lot of people think the kingdom of God is what feels good to me. A lot of people think the kingdom of God is what satisfies the flesh. No, you've got it twisted. They told you wrong. The kingdom of God is right standing with God. So I have to come to a realization to understand what is God requiring of me? What is God requiring of me? Is God requiring me to leave this city, this this state, this town, this job, this people, this uh, uh, territory? What is God requiring of me? Is God requiring me to love somebody to my own hurt? Is God requiring me to walk through this trial without flinching, without staggering? What is he requiring of me that's going to put me in right standing with God? I want to be in a right posture with God. I want to be on the right side of God's agenda. I want to be in the right position in God's mission. I want to be a co cooperator with God's great vision. So what is God's great vision? To save and redeem humanity, to bring humanity back to himself. So what is our partnership? To use our gifts, talents, abilities, and everything that God has placed in us to help him with that mission. So we want to be in righteousness, peace. We want to have peace with God and peace with others. How do I have peace with God? I stay in the, the will of God. When we are 
against God. We are enemies of God and we don't have peace with God. When we walk in the sin nature and we practice sin and we choose evil practices, we don't have peace with God because we then become his enemy. Oh, Jesus. When we practice sin, when we keep on sinning, we are practicing sin and we are enemies with God and we don't have peace with God because God is against us. Jesus. Jesus. So we cannot partner with God while still partnering with the sin and flesh because the kingdom of God is not satisfaction. The kingdom of God doesn't uh, appeal to your flesh. The kingdom of God doesn't satisfy your belly. It doesn't satisfy, satisfy your fleshly desires. It doesn't satisfy your cravings. Your fleshly cravings for sin, unrighteousness. Your, the kingdom of God is right standing with God, peace with God, meaning I stay within his will and I don't commit sin because when I commit sin, I am opposed to God and I don't have peace with him. Uh, you know, when, when people in the Old Testament would go to war, they would meet individuals and they would say, are you coming in peace? Are you a enemy or are you a friend? Are you coming in peace? Right. Because we are in the midst of a war. And if we do not choose God's side, we don't have peace with God. He is against us. Uh, and a lot of believers think just because they're in church that they have peace with God. No, you got to live righteous. You got to live righteous to have peace with God. And some of us, some things are not working in our lives because we don't have peace with God. God opposes us. He opposes us and he resists the proud. But he says in the scriptures, I give grace and more grace to the humble. So the humble will begin to experience the goodness. The humble are those who are submissive to the Lord. The humble are those who seek righteousness. The humble are those who are unright in right standing with God. So he says this at the end of that scripture. He says, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. If we don't have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, hear me, we are not in the kingdom. Oh God. Oh, I, that just, I just dropped a bomb there. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink. Ah, oh, come on. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You cannot be in the kingdom of God without fellowship, yieldedness, relationship with the Holy Spirit. So we have to learn how to be in relationship with him. Remember, I told you guys last week that the Holy Spirit is like uh, likened unto us as Jesus was with the disciples. And Jesus told the disciples, if I don't wash you, you have you will have no part of me. When we have the Holy Spirit, he is the one that washes us, cleanses us, uh, um, makes us what we ought to be, takes sin out of us works with the vessel. The Holy Spirit transforms the vessel. The Holy Spirit brings a vessel into revelation of who they are. The Holy Spirit leads and guides the vessel. The Holy Spirit is the one that is the power behind the Trinity. So if I don't have fellowship with the power behind the Trinity, he's trying to work with you. He's trying to get you there, but you are a vessel that is not partnering, that's not yielding, that wants your own way, that wants to do it the world's way, that wants the easy way out, that doesn't want to walk through pain, that doesn't want to suffer, that doesn't want to long suffer. Listen, the manifestation and the fruit of the spirit is also long suffering. 
So if I am not long suffering through trials and I can withstand under test, then do I have fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Do I have partnership with the Holy Spirit? Is he able to manifest through me because I don't like pain? Listen, I want to tell you, I don't like pain. The only way, reason why I had kids is because that's the only way you can have them is if you experience some pain. Listen, I don't like pain. I, I, I would tell people, I would tell my mom all the time, like when we moved or something, I'm like, I don't, I, I don't like manual labor. I don't like manual labor, but it's something, sometimes it's what you have to do to make it through, right? So sometimes we have to put on and we have to activate and grow and mature in our long suffering so that we can be candidates to walk in the fullness of who we are called to be. Okay. So the Holy Spirit is the one that we are partnering with. So what does that look like? I need to have joy in him. I need to be excited that he lives in me. I need to have a relationship with him. I need to be talking to him and I need to be waiting for him to answer. I need to see his handprint. Come on. When you are in relationship with somebody, you recognize their presence. When you are in relationship with somebody, you talk to that person and you wait for that person to talk to you. You enjoy their presence. This is why Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm going to send another comforter. What does a comforter do? He comforts. The Holy Spirit comforts us through our long suffering. He comforts us through sickness. He comforts us through trials. He comforts us through pain. He encourages us he encourages us to keep going. Did you share this? So when we are not in relationship with the Holy Spirit, we are missing out on a vital component to our Christian walk. We cannot enjoy the kingdom benefits void of the Holy Spirit, void of a relationship, void of partnership. He is the one that will help you do every assignment. And I had to learn these things. I had to walk through these things just as you do. He is the one that's going to accomplish God's will. He is the one that's going to do it through you as you yield. Even things that you don't know how to do in your natural capabilities. He is the one who says, don't worry, I got you. I'm doing it through you. Don't worry, I got you. I'm going to help you love that person. Don't worry, I got you. So what do I have to do? I have to yield my will. I have to yield my anger. I have to yield my self-preservation. I have to die to myself. I have to sacrifice myself. Just as Jesus did for the church. We have to do that same thing for the service of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is the one that excites interest in the mind for God. The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us. He gives us his personal interest, which becomes our personal interest. We become lovers of God. We become infatuated by God. We become willing vessels that will allow him to possess us by our yieldedness, not him overpowering us and making us do something we don't want to do. That's not his character. That is the enemy. The Holy Spirit will always partner with you. Because God honors our free will. I don't believe personally that the Holy Spirit will embarrass you or humiliate you or use you against your will. We see the seven sons of Sceva when um, they tried to operate in an authority that didn't belong to them and they tried to use somebody else's name against the enemy. The enemy made a spectacle of them. That's not the character of the Holy Spirit. 
Because we understand the nature of God and we understand when God uses a vessel, we are in awe. We should be captivated by his, uh, even his desire to use us. It's a posture of humility. God, I'm not worthy for you to use me. Not embarrassment. It's a posture of how sovereign he is, his, his love for us. We should be overwhelmed by his love to use us, not hu humiliated that he used us because we came out of our character, which if we come out of our character, that is our true self in God. Because we should always walk in the spirit. So if the spirit uses me and it's not according to how I would naturally be behave, that's who you're supposed to be in God when God transforms you and when the Holy Spirit converts you. We look at the life of Peter. We look at the life of Timothy. When Paul was instructing Timothy about his assignment and he told him, don't be timid. You got the Holy Ghost in you. You better be bold, be an example. Don't cower down because the Holy Spirit in you. Remember who you are in God. So oftentimes our natural wounds and traumas and all those things try to shut us down and stop us from being who we are in God. And when we uh, stand up and we're bold, when sometimes we're quiet, reserved, we think that's not who we're supposed to be, but it's indeed who we're supposed to be. We look at the life of Peter. Peter was a coward. But then when the Holy Ghost came in him, he preached boldly with courage and conviction. He ran, he, he denied Jesus before the Holy Spirit came on him. And when the Holy Spirit, and this is what Jesus told him, when you are converted, when you change into who you're supposed to be, because the Holy Spirit now is in you. When you wake up and recognize who you really are. So the Holy Spirit is not going to overpower you. And a lot of people uh, try to sh tend to shy away from supernatural experiences because of ignorance. Because they do not understand the kingdom of God. They do not understand the, uh, uh, the divine workings of the spirit. They do not understand what it is to have the Holy Spirit live in you. The Holy Spirit takes out sin. He doesn't sit with sin. His job is to take it out of you. He wants it out of you, not coexisting with it, not coexisting with depression, not coexisting with sickness. He wants to take it out. Not barely uh, surviving. Not just survival mode. The Holy Spirit wants you to thrive and have joy in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to have joy in your relationship. Okay, so he is the one that is teaching. He is the one that's highlighting the scriptures. He is the one when you read the word, he's illuminating the word. Reading this holy scriptures are a suit is a supernatural invitation. It's a supernatural experience. It's a supernatural encounter when you read the holy scriptures. He is the one that highlights the scriptures. He is the one that tells you stop. Let's talk about that. He is the one that says now ask me questions and I'm going to tell you the answers. It could be words you looked at a hundred times. He is the one that highlights a billboard that's sending you a message. He is the one that highlights a particular color. He is the one that highlights the time. Now, we can't get radical in our, our uh, supernatural experiences. We have to make sure that we are being led by the Holy Spirit and not fanaticism. Oh, 
The Holy Spirit gives understanding. Remember, we talked about the sevenfold spirit of God last week and the candelabra within the holies of holies, how the candelabra lights up the whole temple. It lights up the holies of holies. So when we have the fullness of the Holy Spirit, we have the spirit of understanding. We have the spirit of revelation. We have the spirit of might. We have the fear of the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, the Holy Spirit is not going to illuminate your vessel. You got to fear God, reverence him, respect him. Don't do things to go against the cross. Respect the sacrifice. <sighs> The Holy Spirit stops us from doing things. The Holy Spirit tells us to be quiet. The Holy Spirit restrains our mouth. The Holy Spirit tells us when to um, go a different way. So we understand that the kingdom of God is divine fellowship with God and believers. When we partner with the Holy Spirit, we also become a aid to other believers. We help others fulfill their mission. We help others fulfill their assignment because why? It's all of our assignment. Because it's tapping into the great mission and the great vision. The assignment belongs to all of us because we want to help God's assignment. So whoever is assigned to do whatever, I want to come alongside that and support that in whatever way I can, whether it's encouragement, whether it's financially, uh, whether it's sewing books, whatever vision you are in that is delivered by the Holy Spirit because we are all in divine fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We are all partners with the same mission and the same vision. Psalms 37 talks about the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. But when we look in Mark chapter 10 and 18, Jesus responds to somebody calling him a good teacher. He said this, there is none good but God. So when Jesus said that, he was um, highlighting who he was in his spiritual reality, meaning he was the son of God carrying the nature of God. So God, Jesus himself was good because he had the essence of God in him. And so when the book of Psalms 37, 23 talks about the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. When you accept Jesus Christ, the old nature is gone. The new nature has come. The old is past. The new has come. What is that new? You, who you are in Christ. The new is who you are in your new created being. The problem is people Look at the kingdom of God through the eyes of the flesh because you haven't disconnected from the DNA of origin, that family of origin, your old connections. You still feel like your old self, but indeed you have become a new creation and you are good. You will have the essence of God in you. So when we step into the kingdom of God, we have to realize that we have a new start. We have been born again in our spirit being. And in our spirit being, we are perfect. What we have to do is keep growing in our understanding, keep growing in our fellowship, keep growing in our understanding of what it is to live in this new life. Just like a baby, when a baby is born, that baby has to grow and understand what it is to live outside of the womb. That baby has to learn how to suck. That baby has to learn that when they cry, people come. That baby has to learn how to eat from a spoon. That baby has to learn how to crawl. That baby has to learn. And that baby has to be around the right community that's going to teach it the right way. 
Sometimes we are on, around the wrong community that's teaching us the wrong way. In, in, in a, 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 a example of that is the story of the Jungle Book when that uh, Mowgli, when his parents died when they were in the jungle, but the gorillas and the animals started teaching him the wrong way. So he started walking in a nature that wasn't his nature. He started having mannerisms and, and doing things that were the nature of the animals. So when he got around the right people, he had to learn the right way. It's the same thing with us. When we are around, when we have been cultivated in the kingdom of God around religion, when we have been cultivated about, around uh, perverted uh, doctrine and theology, um, uh, sinful practices, a, a, a culture that continues to sin and, and follow after its own way. When we get around the true kingdom of God, we are out of sorts. When we get around those who are truly living in the kingdom and they start pointing out the things that we are doing wrong, we can humbly learn or we can pridefully reject. So we understand that we're all born sinners, but we all have been redeemed when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we then have partnership with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. We are clothed in a new cloth cloth of righteousness. We are no longer under the sin of Adam. We have stepped into the lineage of Jesus Christ through the spirit. So the children of God walk with God and their steps are directed by God and they delight in God and God in them. When the person steps into the preordained works, their steps have been ordered. They've already been set in place. They have already been put on the earth for them to do. These are the preordained works. When the Bible says your steps are ordered by the Lord, those steps have already been set for you to do. It's already designed for you to write the book. It's already designed for you to build that business. Those are your steps being ordered, already mapped out by God. And God gives delight when that person walks in that. He delights in you. He has pleasure in you. You're on his radar. When we, when we don't become one that partners with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, the Holy Spirit will work with everybody. It's, that's his job. That's what he's trying to do in, in us. Accomplish the will of the Father, mature us, grow us, point out things, lead us, guide us, direct us, teach us. He's trying to work with the vessel to get the vessel to the place of maturity so the vessel can start receiving the preordained works that God can find delight in that vessel. So Holy Spirit is, is working and, 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 and changing and breaking down. You're on the potter's wheel because the Holy Spirit is trying to make you into the vessel that you ought to be to step into the preordained ordered steps. David, just like David has seen God's direction in his life and God ordered David's steps, but that doesn't mean God was dictating everything to David because we see that David got out of alignment. But when David got out of alignment and when David saw this misalignment in his life, what did he do? He repented, got himself back in order and got himself back in alignment. So being in, in, in the will of God doesn't mean that you may miss step. You may make mistakes. You may um, get out of alignment, but because we are, we have Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit will convict you to say, Hey, 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 you're going the wrong way. Hey, 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 don't, don't hang out with that. Hey, 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 the, um, you, you're, you're talking wrong. He will convict you to get you back into order, but pride wants to keep going in its own way. Remember yielding your will submission to the Lord. Submission to the Holy Spirit. 
Everything God wants us to know is found in relationship with him. It's found in fellowship with him. Every situation that you can think of, God has given us direction. God has given us instruction in his word. So when we partner with the Holy Spirit and when we study the word of God, when we're found in the Holy Scripture so we can know the character of God, so we can see his patterns, his, his uh, shadows and how he operates, his nature, who he is, how he deals with humanity, the things that he's done before, the things that he's still doing again. We can rightly divide the truth of who he is and where we fit in his great vision. So then when we also follow the scriptures and when we follow the Holy Spirit, Spirit, God is able to direct our path. He's able to delight in that path. He's able to delight. We want to become those who are on God's radar. We are on God's radar when we step into the good things. We are on God's radar when we partner with the Holy Spirit. We talked last week about I think it was last week or it was yes, yesterday about how Mary began to be surveyed and Mary found favor because of her life. So we want to be those who become vessels that are on God's radar to say she's really diligent. He's really obedient. He's submissive. He walks in humility. I think we can do something. I know we can do something here because remember I told you they don't start a work if they know that they're not, it's going to not, not going to be finished. If God's starting something in you, he know it's going to be done. So if any man comes after him, he first has to deny himself, take up his cross and follow him deny ourselves that's yielding our will to the to our will and our dreams to christ yielding our desires yielding our our carnal um reality what we want yielding it all to christ saying is this a, is this according to your will i desire this but is this according to your will nevertheless not mine but yours if this job is I desire this $70,000 increase. If this is not within your will, I'll lay it down. I desire this $20,000 increase. If this is not your will, I'll lay it down. I desire to start this business, but if this is not in your will, I'll lay it down. I desire to go to this state and build a house, but if it's not in your will, I'll lay it down. Most people won't lay it down. They won't partner enough with the Holy Spirit to see the manifestation of why he said you can't take the 70,000. Maybe he has a hundred thousand waiting for you. Maybe he wants to make you a millionaire. Maybe he wants um, something different to manifest in your life. Maybe that's the wrong path for you. But a lot of people, because they have to deny that fleshly lust of the flesh, lust, lust of the eye and the pride of life, they don't yield their will. They don't partner with the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, help me to yield my will and bypass this opportunity. Because that's a death to self, especially when it's something that you truly desire and something that you feel will change the trajectory of your life. But the path God will take will change you. Uh, listen. Taking up our cross is not just to say that we are Christians, but to show it by godly, by gladly assuming the shame and reproach that the cross gives. When we do this, we will follow Christ's example. We will truly be Christ followers and Christ like. This, guys, is what God delights. He delights in this. A lot of people walk in pride. Proverbs chapter 6, 16, verse 19 talks about this. All the things that God hates. 
When we truly know Jesus, we walk in submission. We walk in humility. We take up our cross and we follow his example. We get in alignment with his character. We manifest the fruits of the spirit. When we do this, we are going to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. We're going to hear it. We're going to be those that fulfill the assignment. We're going to be those that fulfill the plan of God for our lives. We're going to be those that have fought a good fight, kept the faith, finished our course, and a crown of righteousness is laid up for us. I want to encourage you guys to keep walking in the spirit and not after the flesh. I pray these teachings are impactful and powerful enough to ignite you, to set you ablaze so that you have right standing with God, peace with God, and joy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Remember, in order to be in the kingdom of God, it's not about your fleshly desires. It's not about what makes you feel good and satisfy the flesh. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. What does meat and drink do? Satisfy your flesh, satisfy your belly, satisfy your desire. Yes, God wants to satisfy some desires, but when you delight so much in God, you'll start to want what he wants. So he's changing even what you want. Come on. He starts giving you what he wants you to have. He starts telling you what he wants you to have. There are, there are earthly things in this earth that you're going to have and he wants to give you. But when you delight yourself in him, all of those desires are filtered. And you stop wanting things because other people want them. Covetousness. That's in the flesh. You stop coveting things because you, you see other people have them. You want them because he wants them for you. Not because somebody else got the house, somebody else got a new car. You start wanting those things because he put that desire there. And your motives are pure for what you want. Because you are yielded to the Holy Spirit. Guys, the kingdom of God is fellowship with the Holy Spirit, is joy in the Holy Spirit, is relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you do not have that relationship with the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you and I pray that you will build your relationship with the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will learn to talk with him. I pray that you will learn to ask him questions, to ask him to teach you things, to ask him to lead you and guide you into all truth, to ask him to help you do everything so that you can do what the father has ordained for you to do. I pray that you start to ask him for help being the mother, help being the sister, help me to be uh, the vessel that I ought to be, because it's him. Those of you who have a ministerial call, it's through him that you'll prophesy. It ain't you. It's through him that you'll heal. It's not you. It's through Holy Spirit that you speak. It's through Holy Spirit that I teach. This isn't me. This is him giving me the, the how to say it, how to organize it, how to put it together, what to say. It's him. He is the one that's speaking through me to you. I'm just a yielded vessel to get on here so he can teach. Come on. It's not about Sherry Downs. I'm just the, the host that he chooses to use. That's how it is in the kingdom of God. Your pastor is just the host that the Holy Spirit chooses to use to teach every week. The prophet is just the host that the Holy Spirit chooses to speak through to his people. The evangelist is just the host that the Holy Spirit chooses. And I'm not disregarding vessels. I'm not dishonoring vessels. I'm pointing you to the right source. We have to know the source behind everything. He is the source. He is the power through Christ Jesus because of the father. Because the father wills it. And it, it's only possible through the. Um, the um, sacrifice of Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. He's behind everything. 
I want you guys to put that in your, the most forefront of your mind. All good and perfect things come from God. So when you, when somebody comes to bless you, say kind words to you, you say thank you to that individual, but you better believe you need to be thanking God because all good and perfect gifts come from the father. Even when your family blesses you, stop thinking in the natural terms, get in the spirit. Live in the spirit and say, Lord, I thank you for touching her heart to be kind to me when I needed kind words. Thank you, Lord, for touching somebody's heart to give me favor when I needed favor. Thank you, Lord, for touching that individual's heart to speak a word to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking through that prophet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You honor the vessel. You honor the vessel for their yieldedness. You honor the vessel because they partnered so that you could hear. You honor the vessel so that they could teach because it takes that person yielding to the Holy Spirit. It takes me sacrificing an hour of my time to partner with the Holy Spirit to teach. Does, does that make sense? You honor that vessel, but the source is always God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Learn to be once. I pray that these messages have inspired all of you destiny travelers to walk into the fullness of who God has called you to be, to walk into the fullness of your calling, your destiny, your assignment. You want to fulfill the assignment. If you did not watch this full teaching series, you wanna go back, I think it's what, last week and this week? It may be a three week series that we've done on the Holy Spirit, how to be filled, how to be led, how to partner. Go back and watch all of these so that you can get the full understanding. This is not a full detailed explanation, but it's a place where you can start. It's a place that you can start so that you can learn to be a vessel that is capable of yielding and partnering and recognizing and building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Share this video to your friends, your networks, your timeline, invite somebody on. Remember, if you ain't in the Holy Spirit, you ain't in God's kingdom. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's righteousness, right standing with God. That means I have been forgiven and pardoned of my sins. And I am now a child of God. Peace, I do not commit sin because when I commit sin, I do not have peace with God because I am his enemy. And he is at war with me and against me when I practice sin. Anybody that keeps on sinning is not born of God. That's scripture. And we do all of this by faith. Motivated by love, fueled by faith. All of it is done by faith and because we love God and we love the brethren. All right. I pray that you guys were encouraged and edified and inspired while you're in route to destiny. Meet me here next week. Wednesday and Friday. Thanks guys for joining. Thank you for sharing. If you're interested in coaching one-on-one -on -one or group, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. If you're interested in purchasing any of my books that the Holy Spirit wrote through me, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com, or you can purchase on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, wherever books are sold. Um, if you are interested in sowing a seed, you can do that on Cash App at dollar sign, the number four, Purpose Coach, or um, Zell Touchdowns Ministries at gmail.com. What you're doing is you're partnering with the Holy Spirit with me so that I can keep on doing my part in the great vision of God. I love you guys. This these teachings have been so good. I pray that you were blessed as I was blessed. I pray that your understanding was open. I pray that the light of Christ um, illuminated your being and that the Holy Spirit awakened a desire to truly have joy and fellowship and partnership with him. 
in Jesus name. I love you guys with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.